Hi everyone, my name's Leanne. I'm a career advisor with the Carson College of Business here at WSU in Pullman. It's nice to see so many people in here. Let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'd like to know if any of you have a resume and if you do, where do you think it is? Do you think it needs a lot of work? Do you need to just get started? Uh, if you could just put some comments in the chat box, that'd be great. Um, it's always nice to kind of know where everyone's at. So I will get started by sharing the application, but in the meanwhile, if you could, yeah, just tell me where you're at there. Lynn says hers needs some work. Jonathan has some pretty strong resume, but wants to learn more. Jacob just changed jobs, so he feels pretty confident. Um, let's see, Gabriel, I, I would say I'm always open to improvement, aren't we all? Uh, Sarah wants some work in updating. Um, Hazra doesn't have one handy. Um, Deanna, she has one, did it in English 402, so it's come along. Um, Holly isn't quite confident with it yet. Annika thinks hers is pretty good, but, you know, looking to improve. Melissa needs some work. Manny, you have two versions. Great. Um, so, Hortnell, constantly updating with skills learned and experiences required, uh, I mean, acquired. And Tony has one, and it's updated. Good for you. And Monica's is really long and needs a lot of improvement. Okay, that gives me an idea. So most of you have a resume, but you need some improvements on it, which is we all need improvements. I was just um, talking with Olivia a little earlier, and resumes really are fluid documents and they always need improvement. So I like to think of them as a work of art, that they start with an idea. And that idea is, well, you want to get a job. But the thing is, is your resume shouldn't look like a million others. It should make you unique. So you need to first think about what makes you unique and how are you going to fit that into the picture of what you want. So what do you want? What are your goals? Is it to get a job, internship, get into grad school? What is it? What do you want? You need to know those goals. What do you need? Well, some of the answers to the first, uh, what do you want? Maybe what you need is a job. Where do you want to be? What are your career goals? These, and you're like, well, what does this have to do with resumes? All resumes should be targeted to what it is that you want. Um, and that's different for everyone. So, oh, sorry, I pressed the wrong thing here. So, master resume. How many of you have heard of a master resume? Do you know what I mean by this? Um, several of you are saying, no, you haven't heard of it. What is it? Master resume is everything. All the details, education, work experiences, other activities such as volunteerism, um, clubs, organizations, trainings, your skills, everything. Don't worry about the length. This document is meant just for you. It's meant to be, uh, I like to think of it as your research on you. Uh, if you do the research before you actually, well, think about in classes, research papers. Doing the research first is desired over trying to write the paper and then fitting the research into it. And if you do the research on you first, then it's easier to just narrow it down to whatever the job is that you need. Or, or desire. So master resume is everything. It's a document just for you. It's not meant for public consumption, but it has all the details, way more than you'd ever have on a resume. It could be 10 pages if needed. 
whereas a resume is probably only one or two pages most for most people. So from that master resume, you will create your targeted resume. Um, another big advantage to have a master resume is once you brainstorm the details, once you write down those details, you don't have to think about it again. Um, and then when it comes time to actually apply for something, you just copy and paste into your targeted resume and you don't have to, uh, what was the dates that you worked at that job and those kinds of details? Because you think you're not going to forget, but you will. Believe me, you will. So one of the first things you do after you have a master resume is to research the company or the organization that you are targeting or the program, whatever it is that your resume is targeting. Um, what does the company want? What kind of culture do they have? Why do you want to work there? What are your goals? Um, most companies will list a job description and you need to study that too. But first go to the website of the company. Learn about their mission statement. Learn about their history. What accomplishments are they proud of? Imagine how you are going to fit in. What do you have to offer this company? Um, uh, there's a question about um, the format of the master resume. The format doesn't matter as much as gathering the content. For a targeted resume, you'll make it pretty. But the master resume, as long as it's organized and has uh, all the details, that's really all you need right now. It's just the research. Okay. So think about what you're going to bring to the table. Analyze the job description now. Once you get an idea of who the company is, analyze the job description. Break it down. What are they looking for? Compare that to your master resume and think about what you can bring. Consider the language of your field as well. There's a certain language to every field. Um, and make sure that you're using that language and not, and using it appropriately, obviously. But the language that's in the job description, it, this is one of the few times ever I'll say to blatantly plagiarize phrases. If it says that they're looking for someone who has great communication skills, make sure you lift that phrase and say great communication skills somewhere in your resume or, you know, even in your cover letter. That's what I mean by using the, the language of the job description. So now you're ready to tailor your resume. Um, you have the master resume. You've done your research on the company. Now you need to pull the relevant information from your master resume using the wording of the job description, focusing on the employer's need, not yours. The employer doesn't care, hey, I'm, you're looking for a job that utilizes all your skills and experiences in a way that's going to help you grow professionally. They really don't care about that. What you need to do is think about Think of it this way, the employer has this empty basket. He, has a, he or she has this need to be filled. How are you going to fill that basket for them? Um, and that's, if you think of it as their needs, that's where you're going right now. The resume is your marketing tool. It's not your biography, so keep that in mind. And yes, uh, Julie mentions that the master resume is a great reference when filling out job applications. Yeah, the master resume is good for more than just targeting um, resumes. It's good practice for interviewing because all the details are there. It's excellent for helping fill out those job applications. The master resume ha has a lot of uses, really, because it's all right there. Okay, now let's think about format a little bit. What should your resume look like? Any questions so far? If you have questions, just write them in the 
the chat se section and I'll try to get to them. Okay, so there's two basic formats. One of the most common is reverse chronological. And it's just like what it sounds, uh, most recent first. Uh, you list your most recent job, the job that you're at now first, and the job that you had 10 years ago will be further down the page. That's basically what it means. It's con this format is conservative, considered traditional. So those of you that are in very conservative fields, for instance, uh, accounting or engineering, there's quite a few very conservative fields. You might want to use this format. For those of you that are in more creative or artistic fields, you might maybe can mix this up a little bit. Um, reverse chronological is great for those people who went from high school to college to job to next job. It's great for those straight line experiences. But if you've had more of a, a meandering path, you might think about a different kind of format. Um, Tony's asking, should we list job experiences that do not support this position we are applying for? That's a good question, really good question. Targeted resumes probably are going to focus most on relevant experiences. You want to um, pull out what you've done in whatever the job is that's relevant to what it is you want to go for. And every job you've ever held, you've probably used some of those transferable skills. For instance, uh, teamwork. You've used teamwork probably in lots of jobs. And even if that job itself was not directly related to the current one that you're going after, you can still use things like that. Um, so we'll move on here. Um, functional or skills-based. This is the other main format. This is one's a little more creative. It focuses on specific skills and abilities. For instance, you might list teamwork and then you'd say a couple of bullet points of where you demonstrated great teamwork and then down further down in the resume you might put you know the different jobs that you worked at but they don't have bullet points on them the bullet points are organized according to the skills that you're trying to highlight this format is considered non-traditional which means that a lot of employers don't like it particularly well because it takes them a little bit longer to look at it. But it's great for those people who have the skills, but maybe not the traditional path. So, you know, if you're interested in this kind of format, we can certainly talk more about it if you send me an email or something. I can explain it a little bit more, but it's usually employers are have to look at this a little longer, it means a little bit more work for them. So I don't really recommend it most of the time, but it can be very useful. Most resumes are a combination of the two. Maybe you'll highlight skills that are relevant in this right next to the specific jobs that you've had. And that might be a nice combination. Still focus on the skills developed, but and not the duties, which is really what you want. Okay, questions so far? Okay, parts of a good resume. A resume, there's lots of ways to put things on a resume, uh, to construct a resume, but there are some parts that are pretty much required. Um, but you still want to set yourself apart. So you want to be unique. You want to bring out those unique qualities, but at the same time, there's, yeah, you got to have certain parts. For instance, your name. And you're like, well, duh. But have your name as the biggest, boldest thing on the resume. So many times I see resumes and the name is real tiny font. You want someone who glances at it to know, oh, this is my resume. Um, you don't want it to be, it should be, like, like I said, just the biggest, boldest thing on the resume. Be, maybe a couple of sizes bigger than, um, the regular font in the resume. Um, you don't need a flashy name and headline. You just need your name to be the biggest, boldest thing. 
It doesn't have to be, you know, a fancy header. It just bold. Uh, you definitely need your contact information on there. Um, I've heard horror stories of people whose contact information changed and they forgot to update it and they wondered why they didn't get a call. So make sure you double check this, make sure it's accurate, make sure it's clearly stated and it's near the top, right next to your name. Don't put it somewhere else, like at the bottom with your name at the top, that's too confusing for employers that are going through hundreds of resumes they'll just think you didn't include it so have it right near your name that's the best practice something like this maybe your name is carson coon and then your contact information you want your phone number you want your email address maybe your address um, some people are dropping off the the address part um, but as long as you have the phone number and email and you check those things, that would be great. Some people these days are also adding their LinkedIn address, which is great. Um, colors on the resume. I see there's some discussion here. Um, use colors with discretion. Uh, if you use too much color, it, it's too confusing for the eye and it maybe distracts. But I always say a good rule of thumb, besides using, you know, black uh, font, is maybe one other color as a highlight. Uh, you don't want too much going on there. But, you know, every resume is a little bit different, depends upon your field. I've heard of some people who switch out the colors to match the company colors if you use it tastefully and not too much. Um, and I say, uh, uh, yeah, and colors, they could um, print off your resume just in black and white. So does it still look good in black and white? And if it doesn't, if it smears out or fades out or looks odd in black and white, skip the color. So anyway, uh, we'll move on here. Education. Your education should definitely be on your resume. The name of your degree, your college, your university, city, state, something like this. Maybe Bachelor of Arts, Business Administration, Finance Major. I'm a real promoter of spelling out your degree. Why do so many people just put BS or BA? Be proud of your degree. Spell it out. Um, yeah, a lot of people know what BA and BS means, but be proud about what you're getting. Spell it out. Um, you need the date of graduation. You don't need the inclusive dates. Uh, just say when you expect to graduate. And you can put a word like expected or anticipated, something like that. Um, and then, of course, the name of your school and where your school's located. That's the minimum that you need for education. If you have more than one degree, list them separately. List your most current one first, and then the ones that you've gotten previously down below. Uh, yes, I would, um, Holly asked if you should add your associate's degree on the resume if you earned one prior to earning your bachelor's. Absolutely. Any degrees are fair game on here. Um, if you own an Associate of Arts, for instance, uh, prior to getting your bachelor's at WSU, list that, but what you're doing now is the one that you would list first, even if you haven't graduated yet. So, um, okay, another thing that you need, you need some experiences on your resume. Paid and unpaid, it doesn't really matter. Leadership and volunteer experiences can be just as valuable as paid experiences. So don't minimize an experience just because you weren't officially paid in dollars. Um, I'm going to go back. Here's a good question about education. You don't always have to put your graduation date on the resume. Um, and yes, it can date you, but if it's 
especially if you're in a program right now, you should put the date that you expect to graduate at least. Uh, for past degrees, especially if it was several years ago, maybe just put the name of the degree and where you got the uh, degree. You don't really necessarily have to put the grad, grad date. Um, And there's another question here. If the company states high school is required and associates is recommended, um, put your highest degree for sure. Um, if you're more than, like let's say you're at least three years out of high school, you don't necessarily have to put high school because if you're in college, well, you don't get into college without a high school degree. so if you have something higher that trumps it for the most part. Okay, so experiences, paid and unpaid. They probably should look something like this. I suggest leading with the job title because that's really what the employer wants to know. What, it, what have you done? Uh, dates, of course. Uh, company, organization, city, state. And then You'll want to list some things uh, that you're proud of in that job or things that you learned or developed. Focus on those more than just duties. Maybe something like this. This person was a marketing intern during the summers of 2015 and 16 at this make-believe company, ABC Marketing Firm in Pullman, Washington. Lead with strong active verbs like designed, created, contributed, developed, and then describe things that you, were that you accomplished, like maybe you designed 20 flyers for distribution throughout the city, um, or you created a new website, or you contributed to something. That's what will make you stand out more than anything. If you focus on accomplishments, or skills developed or learned. If you just list duties, you're not going to stand out. Um, you're just going to be along with the crowd because you can say something like, responsible for taking out the trash, but did you actually take it out? We don't know because you just said you were responsible for it, not that you did it. So think in active terms. Strong active verbs will help you think in active terms. And if you think about, hey, I'm really proud that I did X, Y, Z, well, then talk about it. Um, anyone can look up a job description, but they don't know exactly what you accomplished there. So this is, of all the things on your resume, if you focus on that, you're going to stand out more than the next person. And that's, I just mentioned that, so we will, uh, less on duties and responsibilities. Got ahead of myself just a little bit there. So, the details, more details. You're like, ah, oh, it, it wasn't that details? No, that was the construction behind it. So the details can make a big difference. For instance, things that you could list on a resume could be things like equipment skills. Uh, do you know how to run a forklift? Is that relevant to the job? Then you want to make sure that you list it, for instance. Do you have lab skills? Maybe you want to list those. Another thing you could list is languages. Do you know more than one language? This is a plus to a lot of in industries. Computer technology, you're like, well, doesn't everyone know how to run a computer? No. You guys don't know my mother. She can barely turn it on. Um, so make sure that you list these basic computer skills. I have seen many, many job descriptions that they want their potential employer, employee to know basic things like Word, PowerPoint, Excel. If they're asking for that, you want to make sure that you have it. Um, so that's something that you want to put on there. Community service, like I mentioned earlier, it you know it doesn't matter if you were paid, and community service can show you as a well-rounded person. And a lot of companies really like that. Sure, you've done, you have this degree, 
and you have these jobs, but what kind of person are you? And so this could show you as someone that, hey, gives back to their community, especially if it's a company that's big into community service. So that could be very um, positive thing on your resume that can make you stand out. This is very, very, very important for some fields, certifications and licenses. Um, many job descriptions, especially in the healthcare field, need certain certifications in order to even work. Um, you want to make sure that you list those. Don't think that they're just going to assume it. Make sure that you list them. Um, and depending on the certification, maybe you would list when you got it or maybe you would list when how long it's good for. It depends on the certification. But make sure that you list them. International experiences. Um, these can really add to your resume as well, especially if you're in the business field, like most of the students that I talk to are, since I work with the College of Business. Those international experiences can give you that broad viewpoint that you just don't get any other way. Portfolios, especially those of you that are in the any sort of creative field, a uh, portfolio, a link to your portfolio is almost required. Clubs, organizations, what are you involved with? Um, these could, again, add to the whole picture of you. And it can show leadership as well. Projects, research. De again, all of these depend upon the field that you're in and what's important and relevant to that field. But if you're in a field that requires anything that's hands-on, uh, for instance, engineering is a real good one. You need to show some projects where you've showed some hands-on experiences. Or if you're in the technology field, same thing. If you're going into research, you want to show that you've done some basic research as an undergrad. Um, objectives. Objectives used to be something that's kind of required or a summary. Um, anymore, a lot of employers are telling us don't bother, especially if it's um, submitted online because it's going directly to them anyway. Now, um, if you're going to something like a career fair or career expo, you might want a very short objective uh, that targets a specific um, job with a specific company, like to apply for the computer technician job with Boeing. That's very specific. Then you know that that resume was targeted to that company. But otherwise, objectives are very optional. Um, you don't really need them. And if you need the space to talk more about your skills and experiences, I would use the space for that instead. Um, one of the questions is, if I've held more than one position with the same company, um, are those each their own job on my resume? Could be. It depends on what you want to highlight. They could be individual jobs, or so I've seen some people group them together. It just depends on what the jobs are and what you want to highlight. If you want to hi highlight the increased responsibility, I would list them each separately. Um, a TB test for education, if they're requiring it, um, maybe you would mention it in a uh, cover letter or on the application. I'm not sure that the resume is really the right place for a uh, to list a TB test, but certainly your teaching certifications would be listed there. Um, honors and awards. Definitely. This shows you as someone who works hard, who accomplishes things, it might be very relevant. And why not be proud of what you've done? Techniques or skills. If you have a skill section, you want it to be 
tangible skills. You don't want to put skills like teamwork or communication skills. Weave those well, some people call them soft skills or transferable skills. List those kinds of skills within the details of your uh, experiences, like in the bullet points under experiences. For a skills section, I would list those hard skills like, you know, computer skills, uh, language skills, uh, equipment skills, things like that. Um, okay. Avoid lists that do not have context. Um, yeah, if you just listed something like um, communication, teamwork, what does that mean by itself? It doesn't mean a lot, but if you add it into your experiences, all at once it has context. We know the job that you used this app. We know how you used it. Okay, things like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, especially if you're in any sort of communications, journalism, fields that would require this, you want to make sure that they're listed on there and that you have skills in them, that maybe you've done things with them. So that's, again, it's all about relevancy. So, any questions so far about possible categories you could have on your resume? I'm going to look at the questions here. Ideal length of resume, we'll get to that, but most resumes are one to two pages. If you're getting beyond that, you're getting into what we call a CV or curriculum vita, and uh, it depends upon the job. If you're someone with a lot of exper relevant experiences, I wouldn't worry so much about the length. But certainly, most resumes are one to two pages. OK, some things that you should not have on your resume. Don't include these. One of them is a photograph, even if it's really cute like this one. Don't have a photograph. If you do have a photograph, there are exceptions. If you're an actor or a model, but even so, it would likely be an 8 by 10 glossy. We don't want any little thumbnail pictures on your resume. It just isn't done. In fact, a lot of employers will say if they see a picture of the candidate on the resume, they'll toss it because they don't want to be accused of discrimination in any form. They want to look at the skills and experiences and training of the applicant first before they meet them in person. Yeah, they'll see them in person eventually. but you don't want that to be the first things that they know. Okay. You don't want awesome clip art, even if it's as great as this. Just avoid the clip art altogether. That's for maybe a portfolio if you're into graphic arts. And of course, there's those personal details. You don't want any of these sort of things on your resume. Things like your religion, how many children you have, if you're married. Do not put your social security number on there at all. Uh, any questions on what you should not have on your resume? Um, no? Okay. Well, if you do come up with some questions, just let me know. Okay. So, finishing touches. Uh, any good piece of art has, you know, those finishing touches that just make it Awesome. Keep in mind that we read in English in a certain way. We read top to bottom, left to right. So with this in mind, the things that should be at the top of your resume are the most relevant and pertinent. And the ones at the bottom, less so. The ones at the left of the page, more pertinent. The ones at the right of the page, not as much. That's why you want to lead with your degree name and then maybe the expected graduation date. You don't want to lead with the expected graduation date. While important, it's not as important. So think about how people read and order your resume in that order. Um, don't be too artistic. This is, the resume is not the place to be artistic. It's considered a business document. 
if anything, err on the side of conservative. Um, for instance, one half to one inch margins all around. If your margins are more than an inch, you're just wasting space. Uh, your font in the body of the resume should be somewhere between 10 and 12. Depends on the style. Uh, with Times New Roman, I feel that 10 is too small. It's kind of hard to read. But with some other styles, it's fine. But don't go smaller than 10. Don't go bigger than 12 in the body of the resume. The headers can be bigger. Of course, the name can be much bigger. Uh, use a conservative font like Times New Roman, Arial, Calibri. You definitely don't want those um, script kind of fonts. Those are super hard to read. Uh, it should, it, this goes without saying, it should be neat. There, it shouldn't be sloppy. It, the first thing that when someone looks at it, they should say, oh, that looks organized. It's easy to find what I need. And definitely no errors. You need to edit it, edit it, and edit it again. Make sure that you read it over carefully. I can't tell you how many times that I've seen minor misspellings but completely change the meaning of whatever it is that they were writing. A story that one of my um, old um, managers told about resume writing one time was how he was helping someone with a resume and they were pretty proud of their resume. It was a pretty good resume. Um, but they were reading over it and the person was a you know, a shift manager at Arby's, and they had had quite a bit of responsibility there. Uh, unfortunately, he left the F off of the first word, so you can imagine how embarrassed he was when he realized he had already submitted it to several people. Yeah, oh no, <laughs> you know, so make sure that you read it over several times, and then have at least two other readers. I always suggest a person within your field and then someone neutral. Someone who's like not necessarily your buddy or your family, just someone neutral like, you know, with, um, you know, that's what I do. I'm neutral. Um, and yeah, double check autocorrect. Thank you for that note, Holly. Yeah, absolutely. You want to autocorrect can pop up with the weirdest words, I swear sometimes. It, it's, hilarious at times, especially, um, yeah, <laughs> and it's not the right word at all. So do double check that. Don't depend on, you know, technology to do it all for you. Have someone else do it. Um, ha Hazra, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. What font size for the heading? Um, do you mean like your name? I, I assume that you mean the name. The name can be quite large. If the body of your resume is 12, I would say your name should be at least um, 16, if not bigger, if not significantly bigger. Um, and then the contact information, probably the same size as the body of the resume. Um, so that's kind of a rule of thumb. You have to see what's right for you. I've seen people who make their name big enough so that it goes clear across the top. That's a little big for me. Mine isn't that big. Um, but, you know, play with it. See what looks right for you. But it, make your name at least a few sizes bigger than the body of the resume. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions? Let's, let's address questions right now. I'll uh, get out of this and we'll see what we have going on here. Hi, Leanne. Hi. Um, so we do have a few questions from throughout the evening. And one is um, on what kind of paper do you recommend using for your resume? If you turn your resume in by hand, I would suggest using resume paper, which, you know, any, you know, Staples, Office Depot, even Walmart, you can get resume paper, which is just a little bit heavier than regular print paper. And it 
shows that you went the extra mile. I would suggest the paper be white or off-white. You don't want any of these marbly kind of papers because it can be distracting. And you don't want something that's too dark. And please don't use colors like uh, blue or pink. And yeah, you don't want to squirt it with any scent either. Um, any other questions? Yes, our next question is, um, to make your resume stand out, would it be okay to use a unique format or template from Word, or is it better to keep it simple? I am not a fan of templates, and the reason for that is it'll look like a hundred others. It, it just will. And some of those templates are really hard to work with. Uh, if your information doesn't fit exactly in the text boxes, you end up fighting the text boxes. And most employers want you to be very comfortable with technology, including word processing. So make it your own. I mean, you can certainly look at those templates and pick out elements that you like and make it your own. And then it shows your skills in, in Word, basically. So that's what I recommend. Excellent. Our next question is, for reverse chronological on a resume, does education go at the top or the bottom? Um, again, look at the job description. If one of the first things they say talks about education, put education first. If one of the first things they say is something about experiences, then maybe you'll list your experiences first, but it really depends upon the job and the company and what they're looking for. Excellent. Our next question is that um, is about addresses. So should you put your address on there? And then another person asked um, or commented that they heard that employers want address information like zip codes to see if you're local. Is that true or important? I think some companies do want you to be local, but you in a cover letter, you can address, hey, I'm moving to the area, um, something like that. And it is true. Some companies want you to be local, but some don't care. Um, it just depends on what they're looking for. And if, um, you know, you can put your address on there and you'll probably put it also in uh, the job application. Just a lot of people are not putting their street addresses in there for privacy purposes. Um, in your research of the company and in the job itself that you're going after, that will be an indicator of if they need someone local or not. And maybe you can make an initial just short phone call to them if possible and just ask them if they're looking for local people or not. Does that answer your questions? Thank you. Um, our next question is, is a CV better than a standard resume or is there a specific job to use a CV for rather than a resume? Yes. Um, resumes are typically used in industry. That means almost any private company out there. CVs are typically used for people in academia or research, things of that nature generally. There are places for, um, if they're looking for, if a company is looking for someone with extensive experiences, let's say, let's say you're applying to be the CEO of a large corporation, probably you're going to have more of a CV rather than a resume because you're expected to have a lot more experiences. Uh, but most companies for most jobs want a resume and that's one to two pages, concise, relevant to the point. Thank you. Our next question asks is, um, should you include high school on your resume? Is that still relevant if you have like a bachelor's degree? Probably not, unless there's a really good reason that you want to have a uh, high school on there, like maybe showing a connection somehow to the employer uh, that you're, you know, from that area, you're going back to that area. Um, there's very few reasons to leave high school on your resume after obtaining a college degree. Um, so I would say as a rule of thumb, drop off high school after college especially, or 
you know, one of the rules of thumbs we, we say is if you're a junior in college, high school needs to be dropping off because you should be gathering enough experiences and educational experiences as well as work experiences to you don't need it anymore. So. Thank you. And on the education note, someone just asked, if you have two masters, an MS and an MBA, can you leave off your BS or BA? That's a lot of education. That's awesome. You should be teaching all of us. Um, yeah, that's a lot of degrees. I would put, um, you know, the most recent ones or the most relevant ones. Uh, certainly if you have multiple graduate degrees, you don't necessarily need to list all the lower degrees because, you know, you're, uh, you're beyond that. Uh, but there might be a reason, like maybe your undergrad degree is more related to the job than one of your masters. And so you might want to leave it on. It just depends on what you're going after. Excellent. And, um, Another question that came up that a few people agreed they had was, I'm looking to switch fields after seven years and I'm struggling to make my resume relevant for where I want to go. Do you have suggestions on wording or how to twist my skills to be relevant in another field? Um, that's where transferable skills come in. Those um, skills that are relevant that you develop in anything that you do, you know, those things like teamwork, like communication skills, these can be utilized across the board in any job. Anyone wants um, someone who can communicate well. Uh, any employer wants someone who works well with the team as well as maybe as a self-starter, for instance, and maybe a multitasker. It depends upon the job. What most employers want is someone with a base, you know, like maybe a degree, but they could teach you the, the little details that you know. As long as you have that base of knowledge that allows you to do the work or at least learn how to do the work that they want you to do um, the main thing um, for instance even a job at something like fast food joint like mcdonald's or something like that you learn organization you learn details you learn how to work well with others how to give great customer service and you're like oh it's just a job at mcdonald's well no you learned a lot of basics there so think about those transferable skills that can be applied to whatever it is that you're going after next thank you our next question is if you have a gpa below 3.0 should you include that in your education section on your resume uh, GPA is a tricky thing. It depends upon the field. Um, one thing that I've seen is certain fields really want you to list your GPA and others don't care. And it seems to be the ones that work uh, that are more detail oriented like accounting, um, engineering, they really like to see that GPA and they want it to be a certain level. And some companies are the same way. They want a certain GPA before they'll even look at you. It's their way of just, you know, kind of weeding down the applicant field. Others don't seem to care at all, especially if it um, seems like the creative fields. They're more concerned about what have you done? What are your experiences than they are in GPA? It, uh, if it's 3.0 or above, why not list it, especially if it's, you know, well above 3.0. If it's below 3.0, it really depends upon your field. And that's, it just depends. So. Thank you. The next question asks on the volunteering section of a resume. Mm -hmm. If you've only volunteered for two months, should you still include that in the resume? Or how long does your volunteer commitment or experience need to be to include it? Well, it depends upon what you're trying to convey to the potential employer. For instance, um, if an employer puts a great emphasis on being a well-rounded person or someone that's involved in community or volunteerism, you're going to want to list that, even if it was only two months. Uh, volunteerism doesn't necessarily need to be long. It just needs to be something that you've done outside of work or school. Um, 
So list it because it will show you as someone that they're looking for. But if it, if you have a lot of other stronger experiences, I would say list those. Maybe not put the res the volunteerism if it's not something the employer is emphasizing. Maybe you have stronger things that you could put on there instead. Thank you. Our next question is concerning a section of the resume that someone's been seeing called core competencies. Do you think this section is good to include or how to utilize it? Um, I, if, if I'm understanding it correctly, and I think I've seen something like this before, uh, core competencies are kind of like a skill section. And I think they're great to have on there if you have some context. For instance, let's say you're in the technology field. A great thing to do is maybe to put a list of the different um, um, programs that you're very proficient in. And maybe you'll say proficient in um, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Maybe you're knowledgeable in uh, Adobe Suite, something like that. Put some context in there. And I think that works quite well. And it depends upon your field what those are. If you're just saying transferable skills, I'm not so sure that I would list them. It really, um, those transferable skills that I keep talking about, those are better woven into your specific experiences. Like, um, you know, talk about your teamwork, talk about your communication skills in the context of what you've done and what you've accomplished, and it'll be much more powerful. So. Thank you. Our next question um, is a little more specific. It says, I am an RN for 13 years. Now I am a current student for business. How can I relate that to my resume? Well, you were an RN for 13 years. Good for you. That's a um, difficult job. Um, so what did you learn as an RN? I mean, besides the medical stuff, did you work, learn to work with people? Uh, that translates directly to business, for instance. Um, did you learn how to work in a team environment? Are you organized? It's all boiling down to those transferable skills. Those things that you learn as a nurse, you need detail-oriented. I know nurses need to be detail-oriented or they won't be nurses very long. Uh, they don't want to be treating the wrong patient for the wrong illness. Uh, they need to administer medicines, you know, specifically and correctly. Uh, those are details that um, are amazing for business. I'm just curious as to what kind of business you're going into. Um, if it's a, um, for instance, accounting, detail-oriented is very important in accounting. If it's management, um, those people skills that you learned as a nurse are very important. So that, yeah, I can think of tons of things like that, that from nursing to business that would be applicable. Excellent. Um, one of our other questions asks, I am a valedictorian from my high school. How would you suggest I list that accomplishment without listing the education of high school? Well, you'd have to list your high school, or you could put it in honors and awards in a section of, like that. Um, if you had an honors and awards section, you could list Val Victorian, um, you know, Pullman High School or whatever high school it was, you know, and, you know, um, 2015 or whatever year it was that you graduated. Uh, you can certainly do it that way, or you could, if you want high school to remain on there, if you're just a couple years out of high school, that's a good reason to leave it on a little bit longer that you were valedictorian. Excellent. Thank you. Um, as we are wrapping up, if anyone has last minute questions, please get them in. Or if I missed one of your questions in the chat box, it was very active tonight, please let me know. And we will be putting a survey link into the chat box, so please do fill that out and let us know what you think and what kind of programs you'd like to see in the future. Next week, we have two live stream presentations. One is WSU International Development Projects in Afghanistan and Pakistan on Tuesday, March 7th. And the second is St. Patrick's Day Feast with Chef Jamie Callison from the School of Hospitality Business Management on March 8th. 
You can sign up for both of those live stream events at connections.wsu.edu. Thank you all for, so much for coming tonight. And thank you, Leanne, for a great presentation answering everyone's questions. Thank you.